Hello, everyone. The welcome to Prima Freestyle Online Workshop. Uh, it is a very great honor for me to have an opportunity for this workshop. And it's a very pleasure to meet you, and I appreciate for all of you to make a time to attend this workshop. And Afrisa is our long-term valuable partner of Suprema. So Edward Van is the managing director of Afrisa, and Tochi is the sales director of Afrisa. Please introduce uh, yourself, Edward and Tochi, please. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, joining us in Suprema for this uh, first training seminar and workshop uh, live on Zoom. I think that you will find that uh, Suprema has gone a long way to, to find the latest and the greatest and new innovations that will surprise all of you. And I think based on our market in, in, uh, in Nigeria and West Africa, you will see that the solutions that they're about to give you are very much the solutions that we need in our region. They integrate to all our other systems and, and as our access control partner, we are really uh, pushing with them to, uh, and we need your support. So based on, on, on that, uh, everyone know you know us, we've been in the market already six years and we continue to work from strength to strength in bringing you uh, new opportunities and, and new workshops. And Suprema really want to, to get to our customers. They want to know how it is in the markets and they want to find out more from you too. So I encourage all of you to be part of the full two days. The good news is this is not just another uh, workshop. Once you have completed the workshop, you will also be asked if you want to, you don't have to, to uh, uh, complete an exam and basically an accreditation of the base level of Suprema will be given to you. So please, I, at, uh, after this, I will hand you over to, to Tochi our sales director, who most of you know and I work with every day, and he will then introduce you. Thank you very much, Edward. Um, thank you for joining. Good morning to our esteemed partners. Uh, thank you for joining the, the first Suprema Online Workshop. Um, we appreciate your support over the years. Thank you, Mr. Tochi. My name is Gox Will. Um, work with um, Wiscom Engineering. Um, it's, I'm excited to be part of the program and um, we'll be sharing the uh, success story with one of the biggest companies in recent times in Nigeria that we deployed uh, the face station uh, device uh, in, uh, along with the mobile access um, uh, solution. So once it's time, I'm sure I'll be called upon and we'll do justice to Thank you, Godwin. Thank you. Over to you, Krista. Okay, so let me start. Lastly, I would like to briefly introduce the overview of Prima product and the concept of product. So you can think that the Suprema, we have a uh, like distributed fingerprint system or a centralized system. Our hardware is divided into two. And in distributed systems, uh, you can think the IP terminal and the readers perform the roles of a controller and a readers uh, simultaneously. So device is same as controller. The device can store the user information itself and can let user access granted or not. Uh, this configuration gives the benefit of simple wiring and low installation and maintenance cost. Because the device can directly connect the server through the TCP IP, and also the, the master device connected to the server can add the slave devices uh, through the RS485. So here the devices you can see in this slide are our intelligent device, our face station, face Station 2 and also biometric device and also intelligent RFID card reader, they all connect to the uh, server, the biostat software through the TCP IP. And we also have uh, the centralized system. Uh, you can see there is a control panel and this control panel performs the role of controller. 
And the devices, the connected, the control panel are just dummy slave readers. This means they are not controller and cross leader. All the user information is stored in the control panel. And when user is authenticated by our face or fingerprint or RFI reader, user matching is done by control panel, not by reader side. So we have a two uh, systems. And let's have a look at the, uh, which devices are belong to the distributor system. So these are the fingerprint recognition devices that are ended with the name station. So these station devices have a LCD in common. So the, on the top of there is a by station two. Uh, it's the device with a screen and keypad. And the good thing of this device is uh, it can be installed outdoor and also supports PoE and Wi-Fi. And the next device, the BioStation A2, this one has a five inch LCD touch screen and it features the powerful, the core CPU. So the matching performance is very fast. And it matches like 100,000 templates per second. And it has also camera like X Station 2, so you can save the image logs. And it supports PoE. And the good thing so is it supports intercom and Wi Fi. And the last device, uh, the BioStation L2, it's uh, you can think the downside of BioStation A2. And these devices can be used for, and these all of the devices can be used for both access counter and time attendance. And these station devices, they are more widely used for time attendance because they have a screen and so the employee, they can check in and check out on the device. Uh, next fingerprint device is um, BioEntry W2 and BioEntry P2 and N2. And without, and you can see there is uh, no screen except for the N2. So normally the fingerprint device without screen is uh, normally used for access control. And W2 is a really good device and is able to be working in any environment because it supports IP rating is 67 and IK0 rate, which means it can be protected from dust, moisture, and impact. And it supports those mobile card and POE. A bioentry P2, you can sync this device for more indoors, and it supports 10,000 users for one to N. Um, the last device, N2, is a also very good device for both the access control and time attendance because it also has a, a screen, so user can check in and check out. And but it also offers very uh, sprayer ingress protection with IP67 rating, and it also supports premium mobile access card. So um, this device is very good for both access control and time attendance. Um, in other the reader size in this router system, we have um, XPS2. This is an intelligent RFID reader, means the reader and controller. And we have a million type and gang box type and gang box with a keypad type. So XPS2 is a tightly sealed against the moisture and dust and rigid. So it can be also used for outdoors. And it also supports the POE and also mobile access card. And uh, this case study is actually I uh, showed uh, yesterday when I presented the Suprema story. I just uh, brought up them again, just showing which device was used for this uh, reference. So, so data center, uh, the Facebook data center was used the five station two and the, the data center in Singapore, they used they are using the N2 device. And for bank side, the Bangladesh Fubai Bank, they are using N2 1,200 units and P2 800 units. And also the SCB Bank in Vietnam, they use the Y3P2 130 units. 
In the factory, they use the, uh, the BioStation L2, or about the one, almost 1,000 uh, devices. In the Vietnam, they are using the N2, the 390 device for its country and time and attendance. And there is uh, the Moscow, and they are using the W2 device because W2 uh, is playing this uh, very strong and harsh environment. It's IP67, IK09. So 1,500 units of W2 are installed in the Russia. And also the internet school in Singapore, the pay station 2 and W2 are installed. So you can see that our fingerprint devices and RFI reader in this filter system can be used uh, any vertical market, uh, bank or schools or government buildings. You can, and there are many options that you can choose because we have a different type and different credential, different devices that support different credentials. Okay, let's move on to um, introducing the centralized system. So this is the control panel and name of this device is the core station. Actually, the core station can support all types of credentials and all types of devices. So if you have an intelligent device of Streamer, you can connect uh, to the core station through the RS-485. And the fingerprint matching and face matching and card matching is all done in core station. So let me share, let me show. The Hello, let me show you how core station works with the Suprema different type of readers. This is the Suprema fingerprint device BioEntry R2. These are Suprema Gangbus type of RFID reader XPSD2. That is a Suprema face recognition device Face Station 2. Below the Face Station 2 is a Suprema's million type of RFID reader XPSD2. All of my credentials are stored in Quad Station, and all the devices are connected to Quad Station through RS485. My card is registered core station. I'm access granted. And my fingerprint template is also registered in core station. My face template is also registered in core station. My Suprema mobile access card is also registered in core station. Thank you. Okay, let's have a look in detail. So core station uh, have a, a four parts to control the four doors. Actually, the core station is basically four door controllers. And you can see there is a um, weekend port and RS485 port and input and output and relay in each port. And the max number of users the core station can store is uh, 500,000. And also, it can store the 4,000 face templates. And yeah. And then there is um, also the score station is certified the UL, uh, UL uh, 294, and uh, which is the, um, the certificate mm -hmm. from the USA and also CE and other certificates. And these are the readers that can. Uh, work with the core station. So actually, um, we have uh, the intelligent readers for this filter system, and also we have a uh, dummy slave readers that can only work with the uh, core station. So there's a fingerprint device BioNT R2, and also the RFID reader device uh, XPSD2. And you can see that the BioNT uh, Bio R2 looks same as a uh, BioNT P2, which I showed in this filter system. And but it looks same, but it's not reader and controller. So it should work with the core station. And D2 looks same as XPS2. The only difference is that there is no data storage inside. So it's dummy slave reader that can work with the core station. 
But except for that, all the features are same as uh, XPS2 and BioNTP2. You can see here the IP rating, IK rating, and the RF options are all same. And we have an enclosure that power station can be equipped. So this enclosure is um, normally required when installing power station because uh, aside from the distributed intelligent reader, the power station, this kind of control panel is normally installed uh, in server room or some secure places. So it has to be protected with the uh, enclosure. So we have an uh, enclosure. And also you can uh, find a similar enclosure locally. And our enclosure is the consist of our uh, power, this tip board, and also temper and battery. Okay. So one of the most um, central things in this system is that dealing with the personal data is uh, maintaining the security of data storage. So as I mentioned before, there is no data storage on slave devices. So all the data is stored in core station and matching is done there. And there's no raw and actual image of the fingerprint or the face in the core station or central server. So while the template is being sent to the core station, the communication is encrypted in AES 2.5.6. And another advantage of Suprema control panel core station that it is easy to install. So when you use a biometric device with a third party control panel, integration is required, like such as a database linking or SDK or middleware integration to upload and download fingerprint through face templates. So there should be a uh, either a cable to, co to communicate with the server because there is no storage for templates inside the control rack. And you have to also connect the reader to controller through weekend or RS-485. So it's very uh, complex configuration when using the biometric device with the third party control panel. However, if you have a core station, you can simply connect the fingerprint and face recognition device to the core station through the RS-485 and just power the reader. There's no other wiring needed to connect to the server because the core station can store the template inside. It's very easy. And another advantage of core station, core station itself, it is a four-door controller, but core station system is very scalable. When you need to expand, core station can support 132 doors, so six, four slaves connect to the core station. So this is a big single expansion system so that it can give you the maximum flexibility to make any design you want at the site. If you have a folder, you can just link, um, install the core station. And if you have a eight doors, you can just add a slave device. The, the device here, the gray device, the gray and square device is the name is a, the M20, it has uh, two weekend ports and uh, four relays. So you can connect the slave readers and rocks to the M20, and this M20 can connect the constants to RS-485. So it's very scalable system. Uh, let me share some case studies that our partners have done so you can um, have a better understanding of our core station. So this is the site from Turkey and they installed the core station with a third party raging reader uh, to the post global building in Turkey. So this third party reader can connect to core station through weekend and core station connect to the third party software because our partner, they developed their own software through our device SDK. So uh, they now uh, installed all around 250 units of core station at the site. And this is the third party integration with the core station. Uh, this is the site from Peru, and they have to connect the bio barcode reader 
uh, to the core station. Because this barcode has read the, their national ID. So the, this barcode reader connect to the DM20 through Wigan and DM20 connect to core station through RS485 and core station connect to files to two software. And the, we, have, we also provide API integration tools. They are using the SAP, the third party software, and they connect the BioStats server through the, our BioStats API. And second core station, the, this is the case study in Singapore. The CDL company, which is the global estate operating company, they installed the intelligent outdoor fingerprint device W2 and core station to manage access control doors and the also elevator system. Uh, because they wanted to use the existing the RS-485 cables they are already used to connect to the, their previous as a control system. So they chose the core station and used the, the previous cabling, the RS-485 cabling, to connect core station to W2. And the core station now is um, uh, connected to the also via the software through this PIP cable. So around 50 units of W2 are now um, working at the site. And this is the site from the Thailand. Uh, they combine the system core station uh, with our bio entry P2 and bio entry R2. And as you understand now, the bio entry P2 is an intelligent fingerprint device and BioEntry R2 is a dummy of a uh, fingerprint device. Uh, both can connect to the core sensor RS-485. And the good thing to use intelligent reader together with the core station is because the intelligent reader always have the relays. So they can use the relay from the intelligent reader BioEntry P2. And also the good thing to use core station is uh, you can reduce the, the IP, IP connections. So there's only one IP connection needed um, to connect core station to BioStat software. Okay, so um, thank you for uh, listening. And so I just briefly introduced the whole product overview of Suprema products. And so our product is divided into distributed system and centralized system. And we have a fingerprint identified reader for distributed system and also control panel with slave readers for centralized system. And we have a mobile access card solution. And now we, we have uh, the new device, Face Station F2, and also X Station 2, which have uh, it chose to support the QR and barcode credentials. So thank you very much for listening to my presentation. Um, Please feel free to ask me. My name is God's Will. Um, work with um, Wiscom Engineering. Um, just like um, the presenter has explained earlier about the uh, brand of products that um, Suprema um, has, I just want to, in a couple of minutes, share with everyone a success story with one of our projects we just concluded. And um, although the project is still ongoing because the organization is actually expanding and they are beginning to deploy more of um, Suprema devices. Uh, firstly, before I start, I just want to say thank you to Suprema and also AfriSec for giving us uh, this opportunity to uh, showcase their product and also our own um, uh, knowledge and ability to deploy their product as well. So um, the company we are talking about is GB Foods. Um, GB Foods uh, deployed uh, access control and time attendance uh, solution with the face station F2 as well as the mobile access, which um, we said I spoke about some couple of minutes ago. So. Um, um, about the client, GB Foods has a history which started from 
uh, one of their products, Galina Blanca, which was founded in Barcelona in 1937. Um, they've come a long way in the, in the business. And um, today, they have a turnover of around uh, 1.2 billion euros and a staff of around 3,000 employees uh, worldwide. Um, they have their Nigerian branch here. And um, also they have other branches across um, the globe. So the company is also proud of their well-known historical brands in each of the above mentioned countries. Um, these are brands that um, we use in our different homes like the Gino in our kitchens, uh, the, the Bama and a couple of other products that uh, you, you may never know that this is the company that pre uh, produces uh, the uh, product. Um, all right, so um, what were the challenges of this organization and uh, why did we deploy Suprema devices? The client, due to its uh, expansion uh, of the offices across the country, um, felt within the pandemic um, period they needed to um, make their environment more safe and um, put in place security features and devices and um, that you know uh, made them go across to wiscom engineering and um, uh, part of what we do is to deliver uh, design and um, showcase new technology to clients that um, want our services and uh, we approached um, afrisec uh, with a couple of um, devices that they had to show with uh, the suprema devices and we picked the face station um, some of the challenges were uh, they don't want their employees to touch the devices, so which was as a result of the COVID-19 uh, precautions that needed to be taken. So we deployed the Face Station F2 uh, devices, and um, as well as the thermal uh, uh, accessories that came with the Face Station, so so they don't have to get a separate uh, temperature gone. So when you clock with your face um, feature on the device, um, the device has the ability to capture your temperature and installs it on the BioStar application. So we have to deploy that at the entrance of the organization. Um, they have their, these devices deployed at their offices and also at their factories. So the expansion is, you know, is enormous and they needed to uh, make use of the face station uh, devices as well for the timers. So they are actually using the time attendance uh, face um, solution as well, which is being controlled from a central point. And uh, we are using the current version that's the 2.8.10. So um, also they deployed for some of their server areas uh, where they needed to use the mobile access. So we had to deploy the BioLight N2 and the expert. So this is done on a master slave arrangement using the RS485 um, station. So, uh, like I said, they deployed the F station, phase station F2 for their time attendance and access control, and then also the N BioLight N2 device and the XPass 2 device, which are compatible with the uh, mobile access. So, we actually created the effort portal for the organization which we via through uh, we configure cards uh, mobile cards for uh, designated employees also um the benefits of using these devices was that um, because gb foods is um, a nigeria based organization and they are all over the country they have branches in kebi they have here in lagos they have their factory here in lagos and um, you know they are spread all around and um, so we needed to create a centralized server where all the locations had to point to so that server was created here in lagos and um, we needed to sync it to their uh, cloud account so from the cloud account we were able to uh, connect to other devices at other locations. So secondly, high performance deployment using the BioStar 2, which uh, improved efficiency. 
uh, we're able to manage each branch on the application um, using the BioStar 2. We created user accounts for them to manage um, their different locations. Also, uh, the rules and regulations around uh, precautionary measures that should be taken with respect to the COVID-19 devices also helped in uh, putting that also in place. So I, I'm not going to end the, you know, the short um, uh, success story without talking about WISCOM engineering. WISCOM engineering is a system integrator. We are specialized in IT and security business. So its main core uh, includes design and installation of access control devices, uh, solution, also uh, into CCTV, surveillance cameras, server room networking, and, uh, you know, all a couple of uh, uh, security facilities you want to put around IT networking. Also, we are into fire alarm systems and other security solutions. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Godswill. Um, brilliant presentation and congratulations on on your on your project. We're expecting to expand to some other countries in Africa. All the best. Oh, thank you very much, Scott Hill, Bill, and then thank you for sharing your success success story. And we are very happy to hear that uh, the system are working very fine. And thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Krista, once again for a fantastic presentation and congratulations to to AfriSec, Suprema, and all our esteemed partners on this call. We appreciate your support. I hope you are, I hope this workshop has been informative and helpful. Yeah, thank you, Tati, and I hope uh, this workshop is really helpful um, for the participants. And thank you very much, Sir Godzilla, and. Appreciate everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you.